Welcome. Uh, today, I am very excited to announce the release of my new book. It is called All Riches Come from Injustice. And then the subtitle is The Anti-Mammon Witness of the Early Church and its Anti-Capitalist Relevance. So it's a little bit of a mouthful with the subtitle. Um, but I want to just talk about what this book is and why I wrote it. Um, and so the first thing I think I want to address with the book is actually the title itself, All Riches Come From Injustice. It's a bit of a um, in-your-face title. It's very bold, um, but I think it's fitting for the nature of the book itself uh, for two reasons. The first one is the quote actually does come from St. Jerome. So Jerome was a 4th century theologian, scholar, and translator who, who worked on the Vulgate, uh, which was the Latin translation of the Bible that was um, the standard translation for hundreds of years in the church. Um, and so Jerome is a very important figure within the early church. And this is a direct quote from Jerome, uh, where he, he talks about um, the root of riches being unjust. And so I like the fact that it is from a church rather because that reflects um, the main point of the book, and that is to analyze the wisdom of the early church as they tried to wrestle with these questions of wealth and poverty in the light of Christ's um, quite radical rebuke of mammon. But the other reason why I like this quote is that um, I do like that it's a radical saying um, that all riches come from injustice because I think we're living in radical times. Um, our world is defined today by unprecedented inequality. Uh, we live in a situation where eight men own half of the world's wealth. Um, and so I think in these times, a radical message is necessary. Um, and so I think that explains a lot about the book in summary, those two points that this is from the church fathers and that's a radical saying, um, because that's really kind of the heart of this book. Um, the first kind of burden of the book is to examine the anti-mammon witness of the early church fathers. Um, I analyze about 50 to 60, maybe even more quotes from the church fathers uh, of the first five centuries. Big figures such as Augustine, Basil, uh, Ambrose, uh, John Chrysostom. Um, other, others like that, and obviously even earlier figures uh, such as the Shepherd of Armas text, the Didache, and, and so on. So I analyze a lot of these figures, um, and I, I do arrange their quotes thematically, uh, which I'll, I'll talk about which themes I, I pull from them in a minute. Um, but the second point of the book is that it doesn't just analyze what the early church wrote, it is trying to apply their wisdom to our situation today. And for that case, I do make an argument that their witness, when combined with the uh, witness of Scripture, points us to the necessity of anti-capitalism within the church. Um, and so those are the two main burdens of the book. Uh, first, to re rediscover the radical anti-mammon message at the core of our faith, and to then apply that message to our situation today in the capitalist West. And so I do want to say that you may very well disagree with some of my conclusions, um, particularly around the necessity of anti-capitalism today. Um, but I do think anybody that is interested in the early church and how they wrestled with the questions of wealth and poverty will benefit tremendously from this book. And so at the end of the day, I do think that as a church, we need to reassess how we speak about wealth and poverty today. Um, and so towards that end, I do hope that this book is a helpful contribution to that to that conversation. Um, so anybody interested in the issues uh, regarding wealth and poverty and how we talk about that today, I, I think we need to listen to the wisdom of the early church to um, go back to some of their their radical approach um, if we want um, to be faithful to Christ's anti-mammon message in the scripture. And so I mentioned before that there are six um, themes that I pull out of the uh, church fathers. These these are themes, chapters, I guess, that I, that I arrange the quotes into. Um, and so I want to talk about those real quick. The first theme is that the early church actually questioned the salvation of the rich. And so that, that's actually a quite surprising point for many people. Uh, most of us today would be very surprised that the first Christians very honestly and seriously wrestled with whether or not the rich can even be saved. Um, that, to me, shows just how radically they took the anti-mammon message of Jesus, his very clear either-or between God or mammon, and um, and they tried to apply it to their own situation, and, and I think it just reflects that very well. Um, and so it was a central question for many of the church fathers as well. The first um, person to really wrestle with it systematically was Clement of Alexandria in the second century, who wrote an entire treatise on the subject. Um, but you can also find it in, in books like The Shepherd of Armas and, and other early texts. Um, and so the first chapter analyzes that, examines why they asked that question, and then some of the answers that they gave. The second theme I examine is the commonality of the earth. This is an important motif that I've found coming up again and again in the sayings of the early church fathers. 
Um, and this is basically the idea that the earth belongs to the Lord and it was given by God for all in common, for the sustenance of all. And so any hoarded riches is a sin against God's original will for creation to be for all. And it's actually a sin not only just against God as the one who uh, the world belongs to, um, but to the poor who are denied sustenance because the hoarded riches have been uh, taken from them. And that leads naturally to the third theme, uh, which is that hoarded wealth is unjust and it's actually theft from the poor and needy. Um, some fathers actually went so far as to say that for one person to hoard so much for themselves while other people are starving, that person is guilty of murder. St. Basil actually has this beautiful quote to that regard where he says that the hoarded bread in your pantry belongs to the hungry, that the extra shoes that you've stored up belong to those without any. And so that, that motif of owing a debt to the needy was an essential point for the early church. And so I analyzed that in the third theme. Um, the fourth theme, I look at the uh, motif of contentment and the sin of luxury. So the fifth theme I analyze in the Church Fathers is their is their understanding of usury. Um, usury just means charging an interest on a loan, and um, in the scriptures it's it's forbidden in the Torah. And um, so I analyze how they they deal with that, and also why the Church historically uh, rejected this practice. And look at a few of the quotes in relation to usury. And then the sixth theme that I pull out is to examine the concept of Mammon as a tyrannical master. And so those are the six themes from the church fathers themselves. The first chapter actually begins with a reflected medi- or a extended um, analysis of scripture itself to ground the church fathers. And then the six chapters following uh, look at the those themes that I just discussed. And then the final two chapters actually uh, conclude with an extended reflection on why the church's approach um, urges us to adopt a socio socioeconomic analysis of capitalism. That their quotes actually the the early church fathers were not content with accepting poverty and inequality as an accidental fact, but instead they went further and analyzed why the poor are poor, why the hungry do not have enough to eat, and so on. Thus, they modeled for us today that we cannot just accept poverty and inequality. Uh, at face value, and rather we should analyze these injustices and understand why they exist so that we can do something about them. And so that's why I suggest a tool for analysis that leads to anti-capitalism or to, at the very least, the necessity of a more robust socioeconomic analysis of poverty and inequality that doesn't just accept at face value the kind of neoliberal lie that this just happens by accident. Um, but actually there's systems and systemic factors involved here in poverty. And so with all of that, that's the basic outline of the book. Um, like I said, I wrote it um, really because I think it's important to return to um, the way that the early church fathers um, understood wealth and poverty, because I think we've missed something about this anti-mammon uh, mandate, both in the words of Christ that we've softened and watered down to some extent, and in the uh, teaching of the early church, because I think that what they are doing in the early church is trying to understand how do we apply the words of Christ to their situation and their time. Um, And they were very radical in the way that they did it. And I think that says something about how we can then reapply that to today. Um, So it ultimately is a point of trying to understand the past so that we can apply it to our situation and um, and recognize that um, we have lost something along the way in terms of um, the the centrality of this anti-mammon message, which was for the early church, not just a secondary issue. It was central. I mean, if you actually just look at Jesus's words um, about you know, 20% of the words of Christ, the direct words of Christ attested in scripture have to do with money to some extent. And so we've completely lost kind of this sense of awareness that Christ did set up mammon as a rival deity that must be resisted and hated if we actually love God or else we, we love mammon and we hate God and that there's no gray area. It is either or. And so I think returning to that radicality, um, radicalness that Christ's original words teach us, um, if we go back to that beginning, uh, we can have a w- new way and a reflesh- refreshed understanding of the gospel and apply it to our situation today. And so, yeah, the book is out now. I really hope that you check it out. Um, I think this message is urgently needed uh, with the rise of neoliberalism and the increase of inequality. Um, And the church cannot just stand by idly while economic injustice is done, while millions around the world suffer because of these policies, because of this inequality, and ultimately because of the idolatry of mammon, uh, which has run rampant and is destroying lives all around the world. 
And so our declaration today must be Jesus is Lord, not mammon. And so I, that's really the core of the book. That's how I conclude the book um, with that declaration. And so I hope that we can return to that today in the church uh, in a radical way. And so the book's available on Amazon, my website, wherever else. Um, ho- I hope that you check it out and um, let me know if you do. Let me know if you have any questions along the way. But thanks for watching this little video and hope you have a great day.